666 is known as the devil's number or the number of the beast. Some people think it's a particularly unlucky or evil number, but where does it come from and what does it really mean? 666 originates from the book of Revelation, the last book of the New Testament, and for those of you who have read it, you know it's a pretty crazy book. It's basically the recounting of a bunch of visions by a guy who calls himself John. It includes everything from a dragon to a star falling out of the sky and turning the entire ocean to poison valleys filling with the blood of slain people, you know, pretty apocalyptic stuff. The number 666 comes in chapter 13, verses 17 to 18. In this chapter, John has a vision of a multi-headed beast rising out of the ocean. The beast has great power. It enslaves the people of Earth, it kills the saints, it forces people to blaspheme God, and it forces people to put the mark of the beast on the right hand and on the forehead. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Notice here that John's not talking about Satan and he's not talking about a demon. He's talking about something that he calls a beast and a man. So who is it? Scholars generally agree that the book of Revelation is an extended polemic against the Roman Empire. In chapter 13, the beast is meant to represent the Roman Empire itself, an evil institution that enslaves the world. The heads of the beast are therefore interpreted to be the Roman emperors. 666 is thought to be a secret code for the evilest emperor of them all, Nero. Let's take Nero's Greek name, Neron Caesar attested here on a bunch of Nero's Greek coins. And let's spell it in Hebrew letters. Both Greeks and Jews in the first century believed that every single letter had a corresponding number. Add the values of those letters together, and you get 666. Sounds weird, but believe me, this was a very common practice in the ancient world called gamatria. So here are some examples. Some graffiti on a wall in Pompeii reads, I love the woman whose number is 545. So any passerby in Pompeii reading this graffiti wouldn't exactly know who it's referring to, but they would have definitely recognized the number as gamatria. Greek authors make reference to gamatria all the time. So for example, Strato of Sardis, who was a famous second century Greek poet, proves to us in one of his epigrams that he knows what gamatria is and he has way too much time on his hands. Anus and gold have the same numerical value. I once discovered this while casually calculating. And he's right, the Greek word for anus and the Greek word for gold both have a value of 1,570. So gamatria by no means was a fringe practice. Everybody was doing it, whether you were scrawling the name of your crush on a wall, whether you were writing bathroom humor epigrams, or whether you were writing crazy mystical apocalypses. From very early on in Christian history, Nero is viewed as the arch villain of Christianity. Early church historians like Eusebius and Roman historians like Suetonius both mention Nero violently persecuting Christians, burning them alive in Rome. Whoever wrote the book of Revelation had a vendetta against the Roman Empire and viewed Nero as one of the greatest evils on earth. We don't exactly know why. Some scholars think that the book was written shortly after the persecutions from Nero in Rome, which would make the book surprisingly early. Other people think that the book was written later in the first century under the reign of Domitian, but we don't know if that's true because there's no evidence of persecution executions happening under the reign of Domitian. Either way, this does demonstrate that the tradition surrounding Nero dates back very early in Christian history. The connection between 666 and Nero is further strengthened by chapter 13 verse 3. One of the beast's heads seemed to have a mortal wound, but its mortal wound was healed. According to the Jewish mystical text, the Sibylline Oracles, Nero is thought to be resurrected at the end of time to continue wreaking havoc on earth. So the book of Revelation might be tacitly referencing this tradition. After all, the author does seem to be deeply steeped in Jewish mysticism. Now, some of you might be sitting there thinking this is a stretch or just a coincidence. You had to switch the Greek word into Hebrew letters. I'm not buying it. Fair enough, but two early manuscripts of the book Revelation all but seal it for me. These two manuscripts accidentally write 616 instead of 666. This isn't a simple matter of messing up a pen stroke. 616 also spells Nero in Hebrew gematria, but only if you drop off the final N. Now, 616 is probably not the original reading. Most of our manuscripts say 666. Our earliest manuscript says 666, but 
this does show that there was an alternative reading circulating at the time, and that alternative reading also was a cipher for the name Nero. Why the switch? Well, one New Testament scholar, Bruce Metzger, theorizes that it's the switch from the Greek form of Nero's name to the Latin form of Nero's name, which doesn't have that final N. For example, note how his name lacks the N in these Latin coins minted during his reign. Now, what started as a secret code for Nero's name has exploded into all kinds of conspiracy theories and predictions of the future. One of the more common theories is that RFID chip implants will be a harbinger of the apocalypse. And we're going to be talking about the 666, the microchip. Book of Revelation says of that time that no man will be able to buy or sell unless they received the mark of the beast. Now, as interesting as it might be to study some of these YouTube prophets and their conspiracy theories, one thing that they generally have in common is that they brush aside the historical context of the Book of Revelation. Using the text as a guidebook to tell the future, rather than taking it seriously as a text from a specific historical moment in the late first century. I have a bunch of research in the description below if you'd like to dig deeper. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.